All right, Kevin and Sam. So thanks for taking some time out of your days. We're going to go ahead and get started here. I'm JD sure. Conte. Thanks for joining us on East Texas Now. I'm here with Kevin and Sam Sorbro, the makers of the upcoming movie Miracle in East Texas, which is about right here in East Texas, Kilgore, Texas, the historic discovery of the oil field here. We have Kevin and Sam, who are the makers of this movie. We're going to start out with Kevin. Kevin, for people who have never heard about this movie before, just tell us a little bit about it. Oh, well, it's a true story. It happened right in the heart of the Depression in 1930. And uh, it's about two con men played by myself and John Ratzenberger that they would go through Oklahoma and Texas. And uh, they would they would scam women out of their money on oil wells. And for the most part, they would uh, they, they weren't worried about hitting oil. They were more worried about uh, ripping them off, so to speak. And they get to they would sell 500 percent of shares to Claire Dry Hold and go to the next town where they got to Kilgore, Texas. They struck oil and it was the biggest oil find in the world at that time in the world so it's uh, uh they get arrested because you know you can't pay 500 percent back of anything and uh while they're in trial every widow that they that they scam showed up for the trials and uh the miracles not really only the oil being found but the miracles that happen after they go to trial yep you guys say it's a story of love it's a story of faith there's so much that happens in this movie sam you're one of the producers of this film so tell us how you created 1930s East Texas. Oh, that actually, that was kind of the easy part. We had a crew almost basically ready to go. And uh, we had sets up in, we actually shot up in uh, Canada because, um, well, we, we had the crew ready to go. It just, it just was a great fit. And, uh, you know, we actually premiered the movie last night to a crowd that was very appreciative in fact, one woman came up and said, I think I was born, born in the wrong time period. I think I really belong in 1930. <laughs> she loved the costumes so much. So that was a lot of fun. And the show really features uh, redemption and forgiveness as a central theme, which is something that's really important to us to uh, to be breathing this kind of uplifting entertainment back into the culture. And before you say, why do you shoot in Canada and not in Texas? I'll give you the reasons. It's called show business, not show show. Uh, you get a 25% or 35% tax credit up there. Plus you get 25% more back on the dollar. And that same location, the same ranch that we used, Kevin uh, Costner shot open range there and Clint Eastwood shot um, Unforgiven. And if it's good enough for both those guys, it's good enough for me. That's awesome. Well, I know that they're working on some legislation in here in Texas to try and get filmmakers to come here, but you guys are making the movie about East Texas, and it's a great story, so we love that. Yep. So this movie, this story, is still fueling our community today. So what do you think it says about the community that it takes place in? Go ahead. Well, I just think, uh, you know, it's really important for us today to understand the value of oil and what oil brought to this nation and exactly. still brings, actually. And in fact, what's fascinating about this story is not only is the movie based on a true story and is is uh, miraculous in, in nature, but if you fast forward 10 years to after the movie takes place, this is the oil that helped us win World War II, specifically this oil field. And uh, without it, we, we likely would not have won w World War II because our tanks didn't run out of gas as fast as the German tanks ran out of gas. And that's partly the reason we won the war. So. It's a very important story. It's a it's an important part of our history. Uh, there's a great line in the movie where one of the characters says, "Well, freedom isn't free," and uh, so it's a patriotic movie. It's very pro Texas, pro oil, pro USA, um, and pro forgiveness. What's well, with the Hunt family became the Hunt family? Yeah, they're the ones who came in, and uh, they, it was the elder Hunt that came in and bought up all the worthless shares and. Uh, repaid all the widows with real stocks and made them all very wealthy and made the people in that area very wealthy blacks and white alike that were part of the whole bringing the process of bringing oil and as sam mentioned about world war ii uh, winston churchill even agreed that it was the east texas oil that helped win the war that's such an interesting angle that you guys bring up kevin i want to talk about your character you know these guys went from state to state they took these monies from these widows and then they would just go and declare these oil wells dry and he has this kind of redemption arc. Just talk about your character a little bit more. Well, Dan Gordon's an amazing writer. Uh, Dan Gordon wrote the script. He's the one who did all the studying and all the history about it all. He brought all the characters you see, all the women you see, the names are from the actual women, of the widows that were that were in the movie. They're actors they're, playing those roles. Yeah, they're yeah. not the actual names though. We changed all the names. Uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. Yeah, he used Dan <laughs> used names of women that he actually knew, but they were not part of the actual oh, story. Okay, never mind. I was wrong. 
Um, but uh, it, it was, I've lost my train of thought here now. Go ahead. Well, it's just that, <laughs> it's just that uh, the guy who wrote it actually wrote it for Robert Redford and Paul Newman. Yeah. But those two guys couldn't get together to to find the proper dates to shoot the film. And so this film, the script, sat on a shelf for several 30, years. 30 years. And then he, uh, Dan gave it to Kevin, and Kevin said, I just love this story. I love the character. Yeah. Um, the character that Kevin plays is, is a flim-flam man, um, but he's a very colorful character. He's very entertaining. And part of the reason that he was successful is he was a very entertaining individual. And so people willingly gave him their money. I mean, I think that was sort of the buy-in is he was, you get that entertainment value. He was more the bigger con man than John Ratzenberger. John Ratzenberger's guy was really an oil guy. And uh, he really wanted to be an oil man. And he had tried a couple of times and he gave up, ran out of money. And then somebody would come in and take over the well and maybe drill another 500,000 feet. And then they would strike oil in the exact same speed that he that he had. So it was very frustrating for him to, uh, to not have it happen to him and finally did. So he wasn't about to run away from it, even though my character keeps telling dude, we're gonna get, we're gonna get um, you know, he's we're gonna the, get arrested. He's the coward. Yeah, there's no <laughs> question. He wanted to go to California and get the heck out of Dodge. But Ratzenberger is like super entertaining, very funny. His comedic timing is is par none. It's just really an amazing experience to work with these two uh, you know, professionals yeah. and uh and and turn out a film that's highly entertaining without resorting to the kinds of, of trickery or cheapness that I think often comes with comedies out of Hollywood. They, they it tends to resort to debauchery or um, uh, what's the other, like the, it's either sex or it's, or it's poop jokes, basically, you know, potty humor. And that's not what this film is. This film is a little bit more sophisticated than that. And uh, sort of the, in the old style that it's, Hollywood used to make. It's PG rated. I mean, you can take your kids to it. Go to go to sorbostudios.com. That's Sorbo. That's our last name. Studios. You and those are. Dot com. Sorbostudios.com. You can sign up, put in Miracle East Texas, uh, put in your zip code, click the link, and it'll uh, show you what theater's near you. That's awesome. So there's a lot of arcs in the story. There's the redemption arc. There's the comedy. And there's also, there's a little bit of a romantic aspect to it, too. So talk about all the different arcs in this. We did cover quite a bit in there, didn't we? Yeah. It's actually, it's the story went on. I was directing this as well. The story went on. Dan Gordon was up there the whole time. He came up to Sam and I said, I didn't realize I wrote a love story. This this is a love story in this. So he actually added a couple of scenes on the days, on the actual day we were filming and we had time to shoot it. He sat and wrote a scene and then we went back and shot it. It yeah. was really quite, it's, it's fun having a creative process that works like that, frankly. Yep. It was exhilarating for us and challenging as actors um so but it all it all really came together and in fact i i was at a meeting this morning with some people who had just seen the movie and one of them uh really astutely said you know there's something for everybody in this movie there's something for the person who's 70 years old and watching this movie there's something for the person who's 13 years old watching this movie and there's something for everybody in between um because because there's so many different arcs and because Dan is such a, a, a gifted screenwriter in crafting the story. I do want to point out that um, because it's because it's so full of of uh, storytelling, there are, and the themes. Uh, I developed a, a homeschool curriculum that's a free download. So if you go to sorbostudios.com, you can download this curriculum for free. Or if you have a book group, there's also a discussion guide because there's so much to unpack in the movie, and it's worth having the discussion after the after watching the film. And I and I, I guess I noticed that if you go to some of these Hollywood blockbusters, yeah, you leave the theater absolutely exhausted, but you almost are speechless. Like there's really nothing more to discuss, um, and it just sort of leaves a vacancy in a sense. Well, you're talking about all the visual effects. It's most of them are right. just visual effects. It's like just watching a video game, really, and they're fun to watch. But you know, when you bring down 15 buildings in in New York or Gotham, you don't realize there's thousands of people in those buildings. So you don't talk about all the deaths of all these innocent people as well. But <laughs> it's just uh, yeah, there's no character development. I mean, you know, in reality, I played Hercules for many years. I'll never be Hercules. Neither will any of you. Uh, you'll never be <laughs> Iron Man. You'll never be Superman. They're fun. They're escapism. But I like doing movies that made me want to be an actor in the first place. Movies with real dialogue. Movies that had characters. Movies that people could relate to. Uh, in one way or another. So that's why you, I keep you, doing the moves the I'm doing. Thinking, oh, you know, that could be me. And I and I could face that dilemma or I could I could make that 
that excellent choice that that character made, that kind of thing, so you can identify with the movie. Well, we want to do movies that have hope and love and faith and redemption. Look at the world we're living in right now. It's not about anger, cancel culture, because apparently these people that cancel other people, they live amazingly perfect <laughs> lives, don't they? So um, to me, it's like, I want to do movies that give people some hope, because you know, more than anything, this world needs some hope, because I, I think apathy is the biggest killer out there. People just give up on life and have one failure, and it's everybody else's fault but their own. Um, we want to do movies that reju rejuvenate people again and re-energize them to try to want to be something with their lives. Yeah. That's such a hopeful message that you guys have. So I just want to clarify something. This is only in theaters October 29th and 30th. Correct me if you're wrong. No, that's correct. Yeah, okay. it's a Fathom event. And Fathom helps independent movies like ours at least get out the theaters. We're on 750 screens. Once again, SorboStudios.com gives you all the information you need. But it is... It, it, it is frustrating the indie world to do wonderful movies, wonderful family movies, and not have that $100 million advertising budget like they do for, uh, you know, Avatar or something like that. All right, guys, is there anything else that you guys want the people of East Texas to know? You know, this movie is about their community, so is there anything else that you guys want them to know? Well, we really just hope that they, they go to the theater and leave the theater feeling uplifted and rejuvenated and and hopeful for the future. And uh, that's that's really the message that this movie conveys is is the greatness of this nation, the greatness of humanity, the greatness of the gift of forgiveness. And that's what we want people to take away. And I hope uh, they tell 10 people and tell those 10 people or 10 more people. We need to fill up those seats. If we fill up seats, we'll get more days, more screening times, because let's face it, theater owners don't care what they show. They want to sell popcorn and sodas. So Let's give movies that people care about. There's 80 million homes out there that weren't kind of movies that I've been part of, like God's Not Dead, Soul Surfer, What If, Let, be, uh, Let There Be Light. Uh, you know, these are the kind of movies that people come up to me all the time and say, make more. And while we're making them, we need your support to keep making them. And so if you go to SorboStudios.com, you can put your, it'll take you to the ticketing site. You put your uh, zip code in, it'll find a theater that's closest to you. Mm -hmm. And then after you buy your tickets, you can screenshot that and send it, just text it to all your friends and tell them to meet you at the theater. Exactly. That's so awesome, guys. Well, thank you, Kevin and Sam, for joining us on East Texas Now, talking about your upcoming movie, Miracle in East Texas. It's coming to theaters right here in East Texas on October 29th and 30th. Kevin and Sam, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks pleasure. for having us. Appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. The Red Zone keeps running even after the game. Join us online Friday nights at 11 for highlights and analysis.